shared an angiogram last year, um, which uh, show a CTO of the LED. He had single vessel disease with normal ejection fraction, and um, he did not want to have uh, really any treatment back then. His father died during heart surgery. He was not interested in that, and uh, actually, I didn't even know about this case. Um, um, so one of my partners saw him and decided to treat him medically because he thought that PCR was not an option for this lesion. And um, yeah, I'll show you the pictures. Uh, go next, Manos. Uh, these are all dual injection pictures when I brought him back this year uh, prior to the procedure. But uh, the angiogram really didn't look much different relative to 2013. There is just mild disease on the right. Go to the next one. Um, with s some right to left collaterals, mainly through the you know septal perforators, and then you can see a, a CTO of the uh, the LAD with reconstitution of the vessel in the mid segment after the large septal perforator. You can also see the diagonal uh, on top. <laughs> it's a very complex case. It looks like the the angiogram is a little complex. I mean, we see the LAD distally. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's very hard to know, understand exactly what the, uh, I guess, what the occlusion is in the middle part. And you see the I, think, I think if you look at the next one, there may be a spider view where you can get a, a feeling for the uh, whether or not there is a proximal cup. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. It's not. It doesn't look like a, a straightforward case. Uh, but there are certainly collaterals from the right. So it looks like if I can, if I understand it correctly, you have uh, the proximal LAD very diseased, but uh, it, it occludes under the septal. Correct. And you have the constitution of the distal LAD, and, and, and you see a little bit of a diagonal, feeling okay. probably through collaterals, right? Correct. Correct. And I don't know if you said, noticed that proximal cap in the in the LAD in the spider view um, there. Yeah, it looks like you have a nice proximal cap, so at least it's, it's, it's defined. Yeah, so I, I felt, and if you go next to the algorithm, I felt that we had both options here, uh, the anti-grid option because of the length, obviously, the dissection and re-entry uh, versus the retrograde option. And um, so I, I that was my plan going in uh, to this procedure, try to... I do a dissection reentry case. Uh, I, in my experience, I really like the the cross boss strategy for the LED. Even though you may amputate the diagonals, you may lose them, but it's usually a straight shot and it usually works pretty well. And uh, if that didn't work, I was going to switch over to a retrograde approach. Um, I felt the collaterals were were appropriate for that. Actually, if we go back, <clears throat> the, way, the collaterals were not very good, right? If I can see them correctly. I can see something from the right, some septals, but not very inviting, though. They're not perfect, I agree, but I've, I wouldn't say they're not um, working. Sure. Sure. But, yeah, I agree. They're not. I mean, these are not uh, class 3 collaterals that you feel you can navigate without problems. So that's what I was going on to today first. And Luza, you have some calcium there as well. So from Jason, to your perspective, that would be probably the two or three. You have the length. Mm -hmm. You have some calcium. The proximal cap, I guess it's plus minus more blunt than not. So that's three points there. And we don't have the torsosity because it's fairly straightforward. And it's, supposed, it's the first attempt, right? Has it hasn't been attempted before? No, it's never been attempted before, no. Okay. So then, if anyone else has any thoughts, um, if Barry or Dick Stoney is on as well, if anyone has any other thoughts about how to best approach this uh, LADC. Well, I would probably just agree with Santiago. That's what I would do also. Right. Okay, so have a good dissection reentry for most people. Okay, if I have to say, the digital vessel looks good. I must, I must admit to you that, especially with the... Uh, you see, during systole and diastole, the vessel actually gets fairly decent size, so the entry mm -hmm. should be okay, unless, of course, it gets compressed by my thumb. Correct. So, if you go to the next one, uh, the 
the this was the initial strategy, bilateral access, as, as we all normally do, 45 centimeter sheets, say French. Um, had a fielder XT for two minutes and then switched quickly to a cross boss and um, was able to advance the cross boss to what I thought was a normal segment distal to the occlusion and put a stingray balloon in attempted re-entry with a stingray uh, guide wire. And I think we have some pictures of that uh, if you go next. Um, so this is the... A uh, guy wire in, in a segment that I thought was um, appropriate for re entry. You can see clearly that the wire is in the subintima space, um, it's not in, in the lumen of the vessel. And uh, after that, uh, if you go next, there, is, uh, there should be a couple of pictures with a stingray balloon in there. So the balloon is deflated, you still have nice. Uh, retrograde float in the LED. I'm not injecting antegrade here. This is all retrograde injections. And, can, can I uh, ask, was it easy going there? Was it easy crossing with a cross boss? Yeah, the cross boss made, made uh, yeah, all the work, yeah. Okay. So it's like you have a good position here. You're at the right I have. I was, I was quite happy here. And, and um, yeah, I, I thought that the kind of the difficult part of the procedure was uh, over with, and I, I felt good about this. Um, however, so that, as you, as yeah, you some, see, some compression you have there, right? right? Yep. What are you pointing to? I'm sorry, I missed what you just said. Well, we're looking at the the, the position of, of the balloon, uh, deflated balloon in the LED with uh, still good distal flow from the retrograde collaterals. And the point is that if you go to the next one, once I, I try to uh, you know, position the balloon, inflate it, and, and re-access, my visualization really got uh, significantly worse, as you can see here. So uh, what I thought was going on here, my, my subintimal hematoma was expanding, and this is common, uh, relatively common, but sometimes you're really now trying to access a, a vessel that you don't see very well. And I, I was uh, unable uh, to, to regain access to the true lumen. And um, I think this is a fairly common problem um, in my experience. I don't know what you think, man, is where you are. You kind of position yourself for success, and then five, ten minutes later, you realize that, you know, you don't see the, the distal bed uh, as well anymore. No, I think you're right. This is one of the problems you can get with any dissection re-entry. I think here, like looking at this picture, I think you moved your sting rate quite further down now. It's way down compared to the first septal that fills up retrograde. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I changed. So I, I started I, I started up north, and I for, for you know, I didn't want to send you 100 pictures, but I what I normally do in this case is if I cannot get uh, into a true loom in, in my first attempt, I start kind of advancing the balloon, de obviously deflate it, advance it a little bit, and see if I can go to a segment that is healthier or more favorable. So that I was trying to do here, trying to position the balloon more distally and see if I can, yeah. can make it happen. And I think, you know, that's fine. I think another, another point here is the balloon looks like this is a uh, double track, I guess, appearance. So. And sometimes it's very hard to actually get the balloon vertical to see the vessel. So I think here yeah. you have it kind of top of the vessel. It's hard to know which direction is the correct one. Mm -hmm. But, but okay, so he, here is my thoughts about, about this. Again, it happens all the time. So the first thing to do is to take a, a balloon, a syringe, and uh, aspirate negative. Mm -hmm. That's to decompress, not a straw thing. That's a minimal uh, 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 transcatheter withdrawal, as uh, you know, that's the one that Gra um, Grantham, Aaron Grantham, just uh, described. Right. So this way, kind of decompress the hematoma and make the vessel expand. That's one option. The second thing is what you just did, which is uh, do the bobsled, get further down if you can, or further up sometimes, and find a better spot for the entry. And then the third thing, if everything else fails, I do something that you haven't published yet, but it's kind of interesting and it works well. Uh, we've done it like four or five times. It's something we call double stick and swap. So we get uh, uh, we get this uh, you know get a stingray balloon and stick on both sides. So get the wire to exit before the proximal marker in between the two markers with a stingray wire, and then we take it out and get it to 200. Let's go blindly with both ports and see if that can get into the true lumen. 
So again, it's something you know, kind of uh, experimental thing. No one the cases not not very prominently used, but only useful sometimes. So if I, if I understand correctly, so you puncture into the true lumen and in the adventitia, right? You puncture on both sides. Yeah, because I don't know which side is the correct one in in correct. The, when the compression and all that. And then remove your your balloon and go with the pilot no, no, that, 200. It, it, no, remove the stingray wire. Oh, the wire. Okay, you still use the stingray balloon, but in, okay. I'm sorry, yes, balloon still stays there. Okay. And I said I'll do stick and swap, but swap and go on both sides because we don't know for sure with the compression where is the true lumen. Okay. Go on both sides with the pilot 200 and see which side the pilot might get a good chance following the vessel. Oh, correct. So, um, in this particular case, I, I was not uh, successful in trying to re-entry using the stingray guide wire. Um, in part, I think because my subintima space kept getting bigger, and uh, that compromised visualization. Um, so, ended up switching strategies um, using a stiff wire confiance Pro 12 and um, do what I think most people do uh, last, which is this limited anti-grace of intimal tracking. Um, and I was able to um, advance the wire and regain access to the true lumen distally um, in the kind of distal to, I wouldn't say apical, but really distal LED portion. And if you uh, go forward to the next slide, you may be able to see that. Um, it's you know one of those LEDs that has two horns at the end, and I think the wire is just in one of those two. And uh, to confirm position, because I don't really see here a lot from the retrograde uh, injection, uh, ended up putting a small over the wire balloon and injecting uh, through it to confirm we were in the true lumen. Go next. So that is the small one to fire over the wire balloon, um, and. I think I feel good about it, um, the position at least. Yeah, and I think it looks you are definitely true lumen distally here. Yeah. So after that, it became a kind of a standard uh, angioplasty procedure, balloon angioplasty with a 2 by 20 uh, from distal to proximal. And then... Uh, it didn't get a lot of love initially. You can see that um, in part because of the dissection. I think you don't see the diagonals anymore. The, you know, the vessel distally that looked fairly healthy now looks um, uh, awful because of the dissection. And so uh, <clears throat> start putting a stance, and my, my hope was that after uh, taking care of the dissection plane, we will get some distal flow again. Uh, distally to the apical portion of the LED, I just ballooned it. I didn't want to put a stand all the way down. My, my my biggest fear is that in this young guy, I will negate the surgical option should he need that in the future. Uh, if I stand it, if I do a full metal jacket of the LED. So I ended up putting a fair amount of a stand length, uh, to two 38-millimeter uh, stands. And there is a gap in between the two stands. I think you can appreciate that. I think I put a short stand in between those two. Uh, So the the part that bothered me is uh, this is the cover stand is that the because of this strategy now the diagonals you don't see anymore and uh, the flow I hope certainly it improves with time but I think it's uh, it's okayish but it's not perfect. Well, I think you you got it. I mean, you, you get you get flow down there. And it, it's a good result. Now, the, of course, it would be nice to have more septals coming off, so the outflow is better, so the, the stenosis might be might be a little higher. But I, I, I'm with you that you know this is one of those areas where it's hard to know what is the best thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, and this has been, I think, my concern with this strategy. I think it certainly works well. You can get the procedure done, accomplished. I'm always worried about the long term um, because you know you have now. A, a fair amount of metal in that LED, and you lost the diagonals, and and uh, the risk of, you know, based on your data, the ACTO, the risk of restenosis is not insignificant here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's okay. I can live with this result, but it's it's uh, it's 
far from perfect, I think you would agree with me. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, would anyone go retrograde earlier, just try a retrograde approach once the, the section had a hard time uh, succeeding? I don't know if Barry has any thoughts. So Barry is a very good retrograde operator. I don't know if you have any thoughts on doing a retrograde here before the I, don't, I, I think I think once you had created that dissection, I think you were kind of a, in a difficult situation, don't you think? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, it's tough. I mean, I still, I, still, I still think there's a chance if you go retrograde, you might be able to to get through to Lumen and salvage it that way. But I agree with you, it's not the optimal. It's a little harder. It, uh, Barry, your experience with this uh, dissection reentry strategy, has it been similar to what I described, or, or you feel at the end of the procedure that uh, everything looks perfect? Well, I, no, I mean, I think that you're right, that uh, you cut off some, some diagonals, but you have some, you have some septal perforators, and I suspect that uh, they'll plump up over time, and uh, this may yeah. actually make the patient feel somewhat better. So I think, I think you'll have to see, and then, and then over time you'll have to see what the, um, what the diagonals look like, and you may, you may end up um, thinking about uh, doing something else with the diagonals at a later time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, would you? That was going to be my next question. Um, would you advocate bringing patients like this one back in a few months and uh, recasting them and making sure that everything looks okay and perhaps intervene on the diagnosis if needed? I, I let the I let the symptoms um, to a great Precise. extent guide me. Okay. Yeah, that's guys, what I do too. Yeah, guys, guys, very symptomatic, so I, I think that. Uh, if, if you make him feel better and he tells you I feel better, I think. Yeah, uh, this one I, I did, I think, a couple of months ago. He, so far, he's doing well. He feels better and, you know, knock on wood. I think things have been going okay for him. But. Good. So let me show you this. Actually, it's interesting you just brought this. So this is a, an abstract from uh, – it's actually a paper just published in CCI. And it's from um, a, an Italian group from this continent, the Gore, the Europe. So they did start. But essentially, what, what was done here, it's kind of last. In a way, it's like extensive dissection, so very similar to the start. Yeah. And I think what they said is that uh, they only stended them. Um, I'm sorry, they, they had two groups. One, they stended routinely. And the second group, they stopped after dissection ballooned it. Well, we say the investment procedure. And then brought them back in three months and then stand it up. And they said when they did that, they had much shorter stand lengths and uh, better patency down the line. And they said that if you did IVUS at baseline and there was kind of a, a, like a smoke appearance in the, in the coronary, the chance of staying open at three months was very low. So this is something, I guess, an, an option here, an option would have been to just balloon it all the way down there and then leave it and then bring them back in a couple of three months. And then stand up. But then it leads to procedural success versus failure and repeat procedure and all that. But then in that case, Manos, what you would you, what you would be committed to was making a big space there, wouldn't you? To, to yeah, you would take a big three balloon and balloon extensively, yeah. and leave it with as big balloon as possible to maintain the flow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, assuming you can get Timitri flow with extensive balloon inflations. Because in, in this case, I guess I, you know, the result after balloon angioplasty was not the greatest. Um, and sometimes, I mean, you probably have seen cases like that of acute MI too, where until you start throwing a stance, you don't really get a sense for what the artery really is going to look like. But, but exactly. I think it's a very, inter very interesting paper. I mean, very interesting idea. Yeah, no, I, and I think that's one of the limitations of the sexual reentry. When you get in this situation of uh, difficulty reentering, then uh, then what do you do? Do you keep on trying with a stingray? You do switch to a star or a last, or do you go retrograde? Yeah. I think you might find the cleanest way. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Finish, and I'm going to ask you a question. So, so in my mind, the cleanest way to solve this would be if you get a chance to go retrograde. So if you get a chance every time five, ten minutes, go retrograde from the right. And if you can get the connection, that would be the cleanest way. Then you, you definitely solve it, no question, and everything uh, will be simplest. If not, 
I would still try maybe with the Pilot 200, or actually I would probably try a, a star, like a Fielder XT, make a knuckle and push it all the way out. Mm-hmm. But again, that's just, that's just one thought here. <clears throat> How often in your experience, Manos, uh, you cannot re-entry using conventional strategies, um, and you have to cross over to um, either a last or, or star technique? So it's interesting. In the last week, I had it twice, and the first one was a case uh, very similar to this one here, where the vessel looked decent, and I tried I spied for a long time, like 30 minutes, and could not re-enter. Double blind, stick and shrub, several um, aspirations, moving the custom back and forth, and finally did the start, did the XT, and it ended distally. It just ballooned, and actually in the end, I just started the proximal part and left the distal. Mm-hmm. And got this decent flow. I had one case yesterday where it was just a very small vessel. I couldn't see it at all from the very beginning of the case. So in the end, I ended up doing a star and balloon. And that one, because I got into eventually, I ended up standing it. But uh, again, I, I, I try to avoid it as, as far as I can. Yeah. Hey, Manos, just, just a little technical thing. I, 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 at my end, can hear an echo of you. I don't know if Santiago can also, but I just want to let you know that. No, I, I yeah, can hear you. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what is, yeah. yeah. Good. That, that's my last slide. I don't know if you have another case that you want to. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I have, uh, I have uh, um, another case. Let me just, uh, so I have a few cases. Um, And I want to show you here. Give me one second. I'm just trying to check with the phone and uh, see that the line is working. Mr. Webex, please enter your access code or meeting the I don't know if you can hear me better now, or it sounds okay? Much better. better. Okay, great. All right, so here, so again, a few more cases. A um, couple of them I think we saw in Sky before. Just get your thoughts. In a way, actually similar to what uh, Santiago showed in the first case. So this is um, actually a case as well of a, of a LAD CTO. Hmm. He sent for bypass, but he did not want to have bypass. And uh, he came, uh, he was referred to us, and the idea was that we would try the LAD. If we couldn't fix it, then uh, we'll send him for bypass. If we could, then, then we will we'll do that. And it's an interesting CTO. If you can see, he has uh, an occlusion in the proximal part, <coughs> and then uh, he also has an occlusion in the distal part. That's a dual occlusion with an island of uh, vessel in, in between. Mm-hmm. It looks fairly calcified. And actually, on the caudal view, there's a stent there. So uh, the patient had a instant stenosis in the proximal um, in the proximal vessel. So also LAD occlusion due to instant stenosis right here, and then an occlusion, and then an, uh, an island of tissue, and then again an occlusion. So again, I don't know how, people, how you would approach this. So it's a fairly long occlusion. goes all the way from the beginning, essentially, all the way down to the distal LAD, very similar to what Santiago just showed us. Now, the big collateral minus at the bottom appears to be epicardial. Yeah, so it's all epicardial. There's a okay. big uh, PDA epicardial collateral going to the distal LAD, almost, uh, I mean, huge collateral. That's the CC3. That's the huge uh, great collateral. Mm-hmm based on the Werner classification. And then there's also an epicardial that goes to the acute marginal um, as well. So I don't know if anyone would just try primary retrograde for this case, given it's a long vessel and uh, a lot of occlusion, it has a lot of calcium and uh, stand there as well. Well, you have, um, you have the, the proximal occlusion is a, is a stent. Is stent. So if you can go through that, then you're just dealing with the, the secondary occlusion, right? 
and then right. you might be able to do dissection reentry because that that acute marginal, as you said, is really an epicardial. It becomes, goes if I if I understood you correctly, right? That's right. Yeah, they're both epicardials, both the acute marginal and the PDA. Yeah, I like I like the fact that you have the stand there. I think that that should uh, I think that's probably the right strategy. Try to get uh, the first one done. And then reassess the the second one. I think it's it may not be as hard after you improve the flow there. <coughs> so we did that. So we tried to do that, and we had a hard time engaging. Finally, use a venture and uh, um, a pilot, and you know we had a little hard time here. Clearly, you can see the the wires out, mm -hmm. but we had quite some time trying uh, trying to get to the stand. So um, I think we tried probably 10 or 15 minutes doing this, and then couldn't get through. So we decided, well, okay, maybe let's throw, let's go retrograde, see if we can uh, get get it better done. And we had this very big uh, apical collateral that was again very large size, no much tortuosity, um, that we felt, uh, you know, fairly comfortable going through this. So, and it was it was very easy actually going through it. There's a corsair, and uh, I think that's a C on wire, so very easily cross through the um, through the collateral. And then we switch. I think that's a pilot 200 now. And um, uh, I guess as expected to some degree, we're not subindimal. So we moved past that uh, distal cap, but we yeah. still uh, we still remain subindimal into the proximal vessel. And we tried to knuckle there. Couldn't really knuckle very much. We had a little hope maybe we could maintain that vessel patency. I don't know what would you do at, at, at this point, since we have still a long occlusion to go on the proximal part. Yeah. And you weren't able to make any progress in the uh, proximal part? Yeah, the proximal part I couldn't. I mean, I, I tried that first time, um, and, and then I couldn't really make much progress in the beginning. What What do you think of, of that septal there? Is that a, I, I, from, from my computer, it would appear to be a reasonable target for a retrograde case, but I don't know if that's true. Uh, yeah, it's in between... In between the the first and the second CTO, there is a septal that has a continuous communication. It may be an RV marginal there. It may be an epicardial. I, I don't see it well, but yeah, no, you're right. So actually, this was an epicardial. It's a good marginal. Yeah, it's but a marginal collateral. Oh, there you go. It, it, it seems so to be. Different. I can say you made progress, but my question is, when you didn't make progress through the stent and integrate, was that because you couldn't intubate the? Um, that area well, or did you use like a stiff wire, like a Confianza Pro 12 or anything like that? Yeah, so we did use the Pilot 200 and a Pro 12 through a venture. We thought that the venture would give us a little more kind of support and point us towards that knob uh, in the LAD. Now, as I'll show you in a minute, actually, we finally tried again and got a Corsair and a Pilot 200, and actually the second time we were able to get it through. But the first time, um, we were not able to get it uh, to get it to, to move. So, uh, you mean undergrade or retrograde? Um, uh, undergrade. Eventually, we were able to get it undergrade. Okay. I mean, get get the get the get the wire through the. The stand. But here it looks like uh, your your uh, pilot 200 is back in the lumen. Yeah. So that that uh, that wire, which I think is a C on as well, that one, the, the middle uh, the middle collateral. Um, that's uh, also a CN, and yeah, I think that's the true lumen. So we're able to cross this again um, without ischemia, and the patient was stable. So that, that worked well. But then we had a hard time, and actually, the interesting thing we thought the stent was going to be in the LAD. But look at this, which may not project the perfect, but we have now the second Corsair, and we're trying to push with the pilot into the into the LAD, the pilot is clearly way, completely outside the step. Yeah. Huh. So anyway, at this point, we, you know, we're not sure what to do any more retrograde. So what we thought is, okay, let's try and degrade again. And again, as, as um, you were saying, that's a good idea. And finally, we're able to get it with this pilot 200 and knuckle it and guide it through the stand. But now it becomes uh, interesting that actually the stand was not in the LAD, it was in the diagonal. Okay. So what you have here is this stand being uh, in the diagonal, and the LAD is, is all the way up to here. 
Interesting. So sometimes I guess things are a little crazy. And just, we just did an IBUS on the proximal part just to make sure we're through the stand and we didn't go outside or anything. And actually, as you can see, uh, we are we are indeed um, through the stem yeah. struts with the rows of, um, under the stem struts. Okay, the question was now what? So we have a wire now in the diagonal under grade, and we have two retrograde wires. And uh, it was becoming a little confusing actually. <laughs> Thanks. And then, and then we realize, you know, I mean, the, we have to retrograde, but the reality is we need to connect to distal lumen. So the, the conclusion was just take the distal wire and knuckle it and get it as close as possible to the, to the proximal LED or the stand and then try to connect the dots somewhere up there. So that's what we can see here. We just put the retrograde wire from the apex, equilateral knuckled and, and subintimal uh, all the way to the LED. But again, we want to avoid this because we want to keep the mid uh, vessel in the true lumen, but... We just couldn't make progress otherwise. Sure. And you have a guideliner, it looks like, in there too, don't you? Yeah, so we have now an undergrade guideliner, that's right. Yeah. We have an undergrade guideliner. So, so in this situation, have you, have you seen much ischemia uh, from, all these, from all these tubes blocking flow on both sides? Yeah, I have. I mean, you know, I, that, that's the first double retrograde I've done. So I haven't done, you know, much of putting multiple Corsair retrograde. But um, I, I, when when you have a major epicardial dominant collateral and you close it, that's when you get ischemia. I've seen bradycardia. I've seen actually people get a systole and arrest from this. So we were obviously, you know, very kind of alert and nervous about the whole thing, make sure we didn't have any, any complication. But surprisingly, he did fairly well. I think part of the reason was we still had flow around that epical collateral because it was so big that the Corsair was not actually occluding the vessel. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a nice piece of work there. But I guess still, so at this point, we could not go retrograde. We could not, we could not get back into the, into the, the vessel. And the reason for the cr uh, crossboss, actually, was because we didn't want to dissect retrograde all the way to the left main and get in trouble. We wanted, if possible, to get the retro wire to go into the um, undergrade cro um, guideliner, so this mm -hmm. way we minimize the extent of dissection. But again, you can see the retrograde wire was not really making much progress uh, in that uh, in that respect. So in the end, uh, what we end up doing is. Uh, we took actually an undergrade wire, we left the retrograde knuckle in place, removed the, the epicardial from the acute marginal branch, mm -hmm. since it didn't help us very much. And finally, with the uh, Confianza Pro 12, we stuck through the stem strut, trying to, find, trying to follow the retrograde wire. Mm -hmm. And what you can see here is actually we're able to finally get the wire undergrade to go, to go down to here. Hey. Those, those markers that you have there? I think this is the IVUS. I think this is, we did an IVUS. Oh, you, you still have the IVUS down there, okay. Yeah, we, put a, we crossed on the grade, and then uh, we did an IVUS just to see exactly what we're dealing with. In that part. So these are the IVUS markers, the eagle eye, and this is the eagle eye um, IVUS cutters over there. I see, I see. So you did a reverse card, but the, the two wires met in the middle ID instead of the proxy ID or left main. Yeah, so at this point, actually, it was just when we crossed. I wanted to make sure we're not far away and how big the vessel is and what's happening and then yes we did the reverse card leaving we couldn't get the Corsair the guideliner to go all the way into the LED I think okay. they couldn't exit the stand we couldn't make it to exit the stand so we parked it there but then we entered with the retro wire into the guideliner into the proximal LED not in the left main but then you but then your 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 integrate wire is uh, in the true lumen now right no it was just a bit it was just a bit minimal. It was not. Oh, uh, it I, was lumen. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think the true lumen was way down in the in the distal in the distal mid to distal LAD. But still, again, with the guideliner, so we didn't have more, much more dissection, more proximal. And then this is what we've got. And again, I guess one of the things uh, I'm not paying much attention, but we're getting a little close to the to the Corsair distally. Want to avoid touching them to avoid any interlocking there. And it's always a question of how far do you stand and how far do you go. But so 
So this is uh, this is how it looks like after we put uh, I think three stems in there. I, I must confess, I'm not exactly sure I understand what you did upstairs. I, I don't I don't quite get it. So, so uh, I'm sorry. Let's go and go back. So we went retrograde and entered the guideline with the retrograde wire. I see. And then, exter exter then put the, the Corsair into the undergrade guide and switch. And then externalize. Ex ex externalize, that's right. Okay, so okay, here, that's the step I missed. Yeah. I'm sorry. So here we have essentially retrograde wire all the way through externalized through the undergrade guide. Yeah, okay. And now, and now, we're, now we're standing. And this is after, after we put the bunch of stands all the way from the mid all the way to the prox. Uh, Lady, but again, the digital vessel looked a little funny, and we weren't sure, and we did an IBUS again, and I don't protect it, but I think we have compression, we're still some minimal there, and the true lumen is up here, in uh, between 1 and 3 o'clock, and there's the stand. So I think we still were some minimal distantly. Which again, you make an argument, maybe we should have left it, uh, but uh, that made us feel a little bit, um, a little bit uncomfortable, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what, what you think. So we were debating for a while, should we put another stand or not? And, of course, try to avoid putting way too many stands at the same time. Uh, the process, so that looked a little funny, and we weren't comfortable living it alone. So ended up putting uh, an, extra, an extra stand distally. And, and now it looked... Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, that looks better. Of course, now the downside is, I think what Sadako was saying, now we're kind of, the bypass perspective, I don't think we're, you know, having much bypass perspective here in the LED at least, because all you've left with is a very distal part, so that's always the trade-off uh, the trade -off here. But, again, at this point, we were... I think it looks pretty good, Manos. I think you, uh, hopefully you won't need bypass in the future, and he was not interested anyway. Um, but uh, did, did, what did you decide to do with the diagonal? Because you had a wire at some point there, right? So I don't know if you can see it here. It's barely filling. Yeah. Uh, there is still some flow, not, not the best in the world. Um, but after doing all this, we had very little interest in pursuing this. I understand. So <laughs> <laughs> we, we decided to leave it alone and then probably bring it back in you know three, four months and take another look and see what's going on. It still has a strict CTO, but... We see how the symptoms are and take it from there. So we didn't do anything. Although I see your point, we could have put a wire there and actually do a little ballooning just to improve the flow, maybe, and and uh, get some more fl uh, flow down the down the diagonal. Yeah. Oh, fascinating! This is a very uh, fascinating case. I think you you uh, got a nice result. Yeah, I think similar to the other case, I think it worked. We still have uh, truncated a bunch of the septals, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, but again, it's one of those things when you go re sexual re-entry, retrograde or undergrade, unfortunately, most of those septals go away. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And actually, let me skip this in the interest of time. Let me skip down to uh, just one more case. And... Uh, which actually is very relevant to the, similar to the first one that you were talking about. So again, right coronary CTO, very nice little vessel. It's fairly long, essentially from the ostium all the way, all the way distal to the distal right, with some island of tissue, again, in between, island of vessel in between, but not, not much. On the positive side, good size distal vessel. And again, different approach. The patient does have a lima. He does have some um, some set of collateral. So we do have a retrograde option here as well if we need to. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we tried first with wires didn't work. We ended up doing a knuckle. And uh, that's a field XT. And I guess we got a little too aggressive. Maybe we shouldn't have done so far. But anyway, it went uh, further than we probably should. So we've gone the knuckle all the way around the around the bend. It's a fairly tight knuckle, if you can uh -huh. see. But still, it's a knuckle all the way down there. So we thought, well, it's a good-sized vessel. 
Um, we should be able to re-enter. So here's the stingray balloon. We have the stingray wire coming out. And did, did the stickers show up with a pilot 200? And this is how it looks like. And that's how now we're debating, like, what do we do? Do we stand this? Are we happy with what we're seeing? Or is there a problem? Well, the wire, you feel good about the position, the distal position? It just looked a little funny, and again, may not project perfectly, but it looked to me like the wire is not perfectly in the vessel. I think in some, in some views, in some frames, I think I can see the wire kind of being next to the vessel, to the vessel lumen. I mean, to my eyes, what I can see here is it's next to the vessel after the stingray all the way up to almost the distal branch. That, and that may just be one of those things that in another view wouldn't be even there also. So most of it's sub for sure. Yeah, I think that, that was a concern. That's another view again, just another view to confirm it. And uh, I think you're right. I think we're true lumen in the very distal PLV, like the very small distal branch. But I think you're right. In the, pro in the more proximal part, we're subminimal. And although we were very deployed, we almost actually got to stand down there, like, well, let's stand it. We'll take care of it. Um, we didn't do it. Yeah. And then we did an IVUS. And, um, and I love this IVUS because that's a beautiful picture of, the, um, this, of, the, of the, how the vessel looks like compressed. I don't know if you can see it there on the left side. Around, uh, now it's around 10 to 12 o'clock. We have a beautiful, uh, false, a, full, a beautiful compressed through lumen up there. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn how to read these. I'm having, you know, for me this is a very challenging um, interpretation. Uh, what are, are, how, what, how do you know this? What would be your ways to, to? I know that you either know it or you don't, but how would I know it better? So in my mind, when I see very dark and and smooth, that makes me concerned. So what I want to see is I want to see, um, like, so, so this one I think is fairly, you know, it's fairly dramatic. If you look at here, um, you have uh, essentially the vessel wall completely evolved and being here. And you see it's a very smooth line out uh, between 12 o'clock and like 6, uh, 7 o'clock. So if it's a vessel, you should have some intima there, some sort of plaque in there. This one looks perfectly clean. Yeah. There's a MIDI out here, and you have a perfectly nice and clean round vessel without any, any plaque in it. So when I see something very clean and very nice looking, I get very concerned, because to me that means I'm subinimo. The, the, if I'm a true lumen, I should have some sort of plaque on the wall downstream in a CTO vessel. Good. That's a good tip. It's not, it's not always easy, as exactly you said. I mean, in this case, you can almost see, like, you see the vessel here. I mean, yeah. here different. I mean, it's, it's much more clean because I think this vessel doesn't have much calcium. That's what helps us make good pictures. Um, but otherwise, again, if I see this nice, smooth, uh, dark area, makes me concerned. Another way to, to look at, if you look up here uh, between 10 and um, 12 o'clock, again, there's something weird like protruding in the lumen. So the lumen, again, should be round. If you, you shouldn't have something protruding into the lumen. That, that's not natural. It should be something round, concave, facing inside. Here, the concave is facing outside, the convex inside. So again, that tells me it's not, not quite right. Something is not right here. We should have the concave facing inside into the, into the lumen. And sure enough, that's, again, the uh, true lumen compressed up there. But you're right. It's not always as pretty and not always as, uh, as easy as well. Like, for example, here, you see here, you have white on both sides. We have indima on both sides uh, of the lumen. So here, I feel pretty confident I'm in the true lumen because I can see plaque all the way around the catheter. But uh, if I go a little further back, now I'm fairly confident of the opposite because there is not, you don't have this white uh, plaque, I guess, inside the, inside the vessel. But again, I mean, it's a lot of interpretation, obviously. So I mean, it's sometimes it's easier to see, sometimes it's not. So I cannot I cannot say that I always, you know, uh, can say for sure that this is what it is. Have you have you moved away from putting a balloon over the wire balloon down and injecting through the balloon very distally? 
Yeah, so this is the, the thing that people are, you know, if you talk to Bill, Bill Lombardi and, and Grantham and those guys, they really get very upset when you do that. Because you lose your options? Yeah, because they say if you do that and you're not true, then you're going to stay in the whole thing and it will be harder to then uh, kind of get back into true lumen. You'll compress the true lumen even more. Okay. So, I mean, what they say, and I must say, I think they have a point, is that if you can, it is best to just try to do it without injecting, just by the dual injection, contralateral injection, or by using IVUS, or yeah. see the other th way is put a soft wire without, a, like, a, your workhorse wire, like a soft or BMW, whatever, and see if it goes easily into branches, which gives you an indication you're probably into the true lumen. Sure. But the, the one thing I realized on this one is once you have a wire into the false lumen, then getting an, an extra wire in the true lumen is much easier because you have a marker now. So I know what, that my wire is in the false lumen, the wire on the bottom, and then, uh, and then um, now I'm trying to stick on top of that wire. And now it looks much better because <coughs> the wire is uh, parallel on the top of this. And this is the IWUS again, now that we're we have two wires, one in the false lumen on the bottom here, and we have one, the IBUS catheter itself is into the true lumen. So I think it's a nice demonstration here of how, um, how it looks like having the wire into the false lumen, and how now that the true lumen is expanded. You see it's more circular, and the false lumen is more kind of like a semi-lunar space. Yeah. 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 That's very... That's very um, Good explanation, man. I really appreciate that. Well, again, this is an easy one to see. I agree with you. In many cases, it's very hard to, to tell for sure. But again, just you know, what the best one can. The one thing that we should do is to actually uh, put OCT or anything, because OCT needs contrast, and we're going to blow up the whole space and make it very hard. In any case, we, again, do a contralateral injection to stent to avoid jailing the PDA. And it was worth it that we did all this because now we have nice outflow, everything is preserved distally, and uh, you know, we're clearly standing into the um, true lumen in the proximal vessel. Very nice. Again, that's a, I guess the message is if you're not sure, don't put a stand because if we put the first stand in that stands a minimal stand, then you're done. Well, remember I presented a complication like that, and uh, I think it was last year where I, I – Inadvertently, uh, had a wire so intimate. I think I, I thought it was in the true lumen. RCA, very similar case. I didn't throw a stem, but I started ballooning. And uh, the next thing happened is the guy fibrillated on me. He had a huge uh, um, intramyocardial hematoma. You can see contrast in the muscle that, you know, then clear and the patient did okay eventually. But uh, it was kind of game over after that. It's almost impossible to come back from that. So, so, Manos, in this particular case, you left the pile of wire and you took out the stingray balloon, then you put the stingray balloon back in, if I understand it, right? Yeah, I put a second wire in. So I left one wire in that space, and then I put a second, a second knuckle wire essentially right next to that one uh, with my stingray balloon, and then we enter with the stingray balloon. Now, uh, let me see if I understand what you did exactly. You took out the wire that was in the stingray balloon, and then, because you had that wire, it was through the stingray balloon. Oh, then you took the stingray, you had the pilot in, you took it out. You said, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, in a subintimal space. Then you put a second wire wired in the subintimal space and put the stingray back in. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I have one wire down here to the left, and I got a second wire down here. And then I got the stingray through this, and the enter through that one. Yeah, okay. So because I wanted to use that as a marker, the first wire, I knew it was in the false lumen, so I wanted to use it as a marker of where not to go. Exactly. Now, the other solution here, I've done it actually in other cases, when I do, I do this and I lose my visualization and I really boost, I cannot re-enter subintimally with the stingray, I, I, I've gone retrograde. And salvage it that way. And that works as well, of course. Anyway, so that, that again, it's almost 2 o'clock, so I don't want to uh, go on much further, but 
again, this is just some interesting cases, lots of things to to do and learn. But again, uh, my, my latest discovery, I guess, for the whole Stingray reentry, my latest uh, enthusiasm or passion is that double blind stick and swap. When I cannot see the vessel, I just stick on both sides and go with the pilot. And I had good luck with this. We have one of our fellows right up actually managed with like three cases. But if it doesn't work, then either do the um, aspiration or go retrograde if things don't work. So do you do you, uh, you fastidiously try to get the balloon to be in the right the right plane? Uh, you mean? Yeah, I'm, what I mean is that if you're going to go on both um, poles, you try to like uh, get the balloon to be one rather than two. Oh yeah, yeah. If if I can, if I can. You can. Uh, but sometimes, if I cannot, then I just do my best and I try to see the wire exit between the two markers or before the first marker, uh, if I can. If I cannot, then I just do the best, I guess, uh, the best possible. And the big thing for this, I think that what I see most people have difficulty is if you put too big of a band in the pilot, it's a problem. It doesn't exit the side ports. It has to be very, very small band, similar to the Stingray band. Okay. okay. Oh, these are terrific good. cases, Manuel. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, them. really good. Really good cases. Oh, thanks. thanks for your case again. Uh, that was a great case. And, and thank you, Barry, as well, for joining us. So thank you so much. We'll post it for the rest of the people who couldn't join. But thank you so much. And again, any questions, any cases you would like to show down the line, that we would love to show them. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. Take care. Thank you, Manuel. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.